Well, hey, Vineyard Church, so glad that you're joining us on this online experience. We are doing just unique things. It's certainly uh, a, a new expression of how we, how we worship. Uh, part of the way we're going to be worshiping is through our giving. Giving is a legitimate way to worship because what we're saying is, even though there's fear, even though there's concerns of, hey, I've got to look out for myself, uh, we're, when we give, when we give to the Lord and sow into what God's doing, uh, we're saying, God, you're our source. And we want to participate regardless of what's going on. We know that you're going uh, to be there for us. And so the way that we've provided, uh, and we've been doing this for a while, it certainly works well now with, with us all being online, is, is this text to give, 45777, and then just type in VCC and then the amount. That's an easy way to give. And I would just ask, would you give right now? Certainly we need, uh, just if you're a faithful giver, uh, we need you to really participate. Certainly that's uh, 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 vital for our church to continue on. Uh, ways to give, text to give, I just mentioned that. Vineyardchurch.com is another way uh, to give. And then just, just check either online banking or you can have automatic withdrawal. Just let us know and we'd, be, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd love to help you with that, figure that out, whatever's easiest for you. In our church, because of our community, a number of people have already lost their jobs. People are being, uh, going down to part-time. They're uh, experiencing a fair amount of financial hardship, even in our own church. So people have been calling us, emailing us, telling us they need help. We've been able to help them, and I'm so excited about that. Uh, we've been able to, to help people, give them money, give them uh, to help with, you know, we can't pay everything, but we're, 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 we're helping them and giving them food. And it's because of your faithful giving. We didn't have a COVID-19 line item at the beginning of the year, but we have one now. So we're putting money in there. Uh, we're looking at this probably being for the long term. And so we want to be uh, the church to our community. That's difficult to do to find ways to be an outreach church, part of our mission when we're all being asked to be, uh, you know, in our homes. And so uh, online church is one way. Another way is through uh, our, our giving people uh, benevolence, helping them out, giving them groceries. When people come by our food pantry, we are making sure that we're keeping the social distancing, uh, but we're helping them out. And uh, families are coming, like I said, even in our own uh, community. And, and that's biblical, you know, because the Bible says w w that we help one another, that when one weeps, we all weep. And in the early church, you saw when people were in difficult financial situations, people that had a little more would help them out. Let me give you an idea, just something to pray about. Uh, for a number of you, you are doing okay. You're, you have a job. That job is secure, uh, you, um, or relatively so. Uh, you, you, you really didn't need that stimulus money. And I'm going to ask you, would you pray about when that stimulus money gets deposited into your account to give that to our COVID-19 uh, budget so that we can help resource our people. So, so just something, maybe that wasn't even on your radar, but as I'm speaking, you're thinking, uh, you know, yeah, you, maybe you were going to uh, spend it on something, but the truth is you, you didn't really need it. Would you pray about that? Just say, God, or maybe just even a portion of that. Say, I'm going to give some of that uh, to help people that are in a difficult place. They're, they're, they're not in the place that I'm in. And, uh, and I'm just going to just just to ask you to pray about that and uh, see what happens. Let me pray. Father, just thank you for our opportunity to give, to, to say you are our source, you are our provider. And as we give right now, Lord, we want to just say, Lord, uh, use it and multiply it and extend the kingdom of God through our, our prayer, through our service, and through our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you. Well, hello. It's great to be with you guys. I miss you. 
right? I'm, I'm a lot like you guys. I have been uh, adhering to the authorities and, and following their guidelines so that we could try to stop the movement of this COVID-19 pandemic that's going on. And, you know, I had a pretty good attitude until this past week. You know, when President Trump uh, got on TV and he said it's going to be 30 more days that we would have to, uh, you know, stay at home, I thought, you got to be kidding, right? I couldn't believe it. And then uh, when he brought up his advisors, Dr. Fauci and Deborah Burks, right, uh, Dr. Deborah Brooks, when he brought them up and then they shared their research with us um, and showed us that even with all the things that we had done, that the COVID-19 pandemic would uh, actually cause our uh, death toll to go up somewhere in the neighborhood between 100 and 240,000 people are going to die. I couldn't believe it when they threw that number out. That's hundreds and hundreds you know, hundreds of thousands of people in the United States that are going to die because of this. You know, after that briefing, I thought, oh my gosh, we really are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It so gripped me, you know. And when the, when the news kept coming, it was almost like wave upon wave, almost like a tsunami hitting my mind and my heart. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to hit Hampton Roads, perhaps not as hard as the urban centers, but it's going to hit Hampton Roads, and that means there will be thousands of people that will get sick, and, and many will die. And in that thought, I thought about my 85-year-old mother, and I choked back tears. I thought about all those people that I had been, uh, that I had been working with that, that have autoimmune uh, disorders, and how would it affect them? To tell you the truth, I even thought about myself. You see, I have a asthma, and in the spring, it really kicks up, gives me a hard time. And I thought, I, I don't know how well I would fare up against this virus. You know, when I heard the news, everything inside me wanted to push back and say, this has to be a lie. They have to be exaggerating. Surely this cannot happen in Hampton Roads and in today. I wanted to, to push back and think that this, this isn't something I need to be concerned about. Matter of fact, I was thinking about the hurricanes that come up our coast. You know how the meteorologists are always telling us, Category 5 headed towards the coast, you know, and they tell us to evacuate or to board up, and, and we do all those things, and then it skirts around us a lot of times and will miss us. I was thinking about that, and then I thought about last year when we had that devastating hurricane come up the coast and how it did miss us, but it devastated our states to the south and to the north, and then right behind that, the thought came of what I was hearing about New York City and uh, the deaths that were taking place there. And I realized we cannot escape. We cannot escape the death toll from this coronavirus. We just can't. And I wrestled with this thought all night long. You know, in the morning I got up, like I always do, for my morning devotions to sit and to, to talk to the Father. And it was there that the Holy Spirit prompted me and said, I want you to, to give me your fear and, and your frustration, you know? I want you to come and to give me your burdens because I want to give you my presence and my peace. I found my peace there. But in that place, I also heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me a message that I want to give you today. And so I'm going to end this series that we've been doing, right, with living excellent lives. I want to end it today by talking about how you and I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Bow your heads with me, and I'm going to pray. Father God, I know this is from you. I know that, that you are bigger and so much stronger than a virus or anything that's going on in our world today. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and that you would bring comfort to each and every person that is listening to these words today, that they would find the hope that their hearts need, Lord, and the security with so much that's going on. Father, I know you're turning up our ears and our minds and our hearts to hear what your Spirit's saying. And so come and have your way. We rest upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I do want to talk to you about this season, uh, this dark valley that seems to have overshadowed us, right, that we're walking through. And so I want to talk to you about how are we supposed to handle this, 
You know, we've got this pending storm that's coming our way, but what are we supposed to do? What are we expected to do in the midst of that? Well, as I always do, I go to the Word to find my answers, and it's there that God reminded me about David, a man named David. You know who he is. It's the boy shepherd that became the king of Israel, right? David, the man after God's own heart. The Bible even says that at, at David's last days, they penned that David was, was uh, someone who, who, uh, who marked his generation for Jesus or for God. He marked his generation for God. He is our role model. And David, well, David knew a lot about valleys. He writes a lot in the Psalms. And so the Lord prompted me to go to one of the Psalms that he had written to talk to you about it today. It's Psalm 23. And so I'm going to read it to you from my Bible. And you can just sit there, right there, and just relax. And let the words wash over you. Then I want to show you some things that God has been talking to me about. Psalm 23. In the NIV, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He, ga he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know that psalm, many of you perhaps have heard it before. Maybe you heard it, you know, at a, at a funeral or something like that, but this particular psalm is so powerful. It really gives us guidance to how we're to handle this valley of darkness that we find ourselves in. And I believe God wants to talk to us about that. Now, it was by no coincidence that last week a colleague of mine sent me a video, and it was on Psalm 23, right? And so this video um, is, is a young girl. There's no talking in it at all. It's a young girl, and she has these placards, right? And it has the verses that we find in Psalm 23, but, and those are in red. And then in black, she writes her response and how she's feeling. And it was so powerful that I wanted to bring it to you today. So I want you to take a look at this video, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more.
wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that amazing? You know, I got to admit, when I first started watching that video, all I could think of was, like, you're going to make me read, right, those, those uh, placards. But, you know, it took me all of about, about a second to realize that the Holy Spirit was in that, that that presentation of the scriptures, right, Psalm 23, and her rendition of the emotional stress behind it really reveals what you and I are going through, and I think that's what makes it so powerful. So in looking at the 23rd Psalm, I want us today to be able to understand how are we to walk How are we to, what are we to do in the dark valleys? And the first thing I want to show you that the scriptures tell us is that you and I can refuse to be discouraged. We can refuse to be discouraged, right? I mean, there's so much noise and things coming out at us from the media and stuff. It can really discourage us, right, with the coronavirus and the, uh, you know, the economic downturn and stuff like that. But look what David says. This is David, right? In the psalm, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And so what he's trying to talk to us about is that indeed we have to walk through this this valley of this darkness, but that you and I, it's just a valley. We're going to, beginning and end, we're going to get through it. And he says, hey, when you're walking through it, I want you to have confidence. You see that word walk? He didn't run, right? He didn't try to hide, right? He didn't stay in that, in that valley. He walked through it. And so he's telling you and I that we can walk and walk in confidence and walk assured. And so he wants us to be able to walk like that. And I know we, we watch the news, you know, the nightly news, and we hear how many people have gotten sick and how many people have died and how many people have lost their jobs, right? And the economic crash, and, and it really can amp you up inside and discourage you so very much. You know, I got to admit, when I'm sitting there on, on the couch and I'm watching those things, that, you know, all the, that news hit me, I begin to think uh, about Scripture because that kind of helps me. Maybe you've come up with techniques to be able to, to talk and, and to, to work through some of the discouragement that hits when we get these, these reports day after day. You can tell me about it. In this live stream, there's a chat section on there, and you can just type in there. I want to hear what you, what you do when those times of discouragement come upon you. You know, even God wants to chat in here. He wants to tell us some things that, that he thinks we should do to help with that discouragement and that angst. And we find it here in this scripture. The scriptures in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by, look at this, prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And so what this is saying is that you and I, we need to go to God. He's in, like inviting us to come in with him, right? And to actually be able to enter into a dialogue where we can you know, tell him how we feel, what we're thinking, what our fears are. We can actually talk to God. He's saying, come and play with me, right? He says, I want you to tell me these things. I want you to petition for me to help you, right? And he says, now the way he wants you to do this, though, is with thanksgiving. And he says this because when we have thanksgiving, we know that God, our Father, hears us, right? That he hears us and he wants to answer us. So this Philippian scripture is telling us how that we are to be able to interact with God. And he says, now here's the result of this happening. And the peace of God, which is what we so desperately need, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will what? Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so we can have complete confidence in God. We don't have to get discouraged. We have a place to go. We have, you know, our Heavenly Father that's inviting us to come and to sit with him. And in exchange, he's going to give us that peace. You know, when I was reading the Psalm 23, another thing that jumped out that I want to talk to you about how we can walk through these dark valleys is this second one. We can remember that God is with us. We remember that God is with us. Now, this is so key, so very important. And David did the very same thing. He said, for you are with me. He's talking about the Lord. For you, O Lord, are with me as I walk through this shadow of the valley of death, right? And so we know that God is with us always and that he's here for us. And that because of that, you and I can have confidence in our walk because the power of God is following with us, right? And so we need to be able to take our cue that God is indeed hasn't left us, that he's, he's here with us right? He gives us the power to overcome, but he gives us his presence. 
that his presence is with us. Matter of fact, I found another scripture here to help even open up this more. It's in Isaiah 43, 2. It says this, When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. Now stop for a moment, because I think some of you, many of you, you've been laid off your work, right? Uh, your kids are home with you. You've got financial issues. You don't know how you're going to pay your mortgage. You don't know how you're going to feed your family. You've got all these things kind of coming at you. And you look at yourself and you're like, whoa, I am way in deep here. And God says, I want you to have confidence because, my friend, he's with you right where you are right now. He says, he knows this, we get so um, caught up in this, that he actually says, that he's going to tell us the second time because he knows it takes a while to get to it, right, to get to our hearts. He says, when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Again, he's saying have confidence. Have confidence that my presence is with you. No matter what the coronavirus is doing all around you, know that I am with you. I am with your family. I walk with you, right? And that gives us great, great comfort to know that it's not just his power, but his presence that's in us, that's walking with us through this dark valley. Now, friends, I've got something else I want to share with you because I don't think God is, is doing uh, this just for us. I think he wants something of us. Right? Here's what I think he wants. I think he wants us to love and care about people around us also. You know, the same, the same comfort that he has given us, he wants us to give it to those people around us. See, here's something I know, that you have people that God has uniquely put around you that are what I call in your sphere of influence, <laughs> right? And so God wants you to lead them. He wants you to guide them and to show them the hope that they so desperately need at this time. Here's a scripture that uh, kind of backs up this thought. Christ wonderfully comforts and strengthens us. This is what he does for us in our hardship and trials. Now, here's the question that we are always asking ourselves. Even the scripture says we should ask it. Why does he do this? Well, so that we, so that when others are troubled, we can pass on to them this same help and the comfort that God has given us. And so there's this idea that God has given you this, uh, this help and this presence and this, this joy and this ability to rise above what's going on, and he wants you to distribute that to all the people that are in your sphere of influence. So here's how it works. First, he's calling you to be a prayer warrior. Prayer changes everything. He wants you to intercede for people. That's how that thing works. So why, why intercede? Well, for some people, they don't know how to pray, or they're so concerned, or they're, they're, uh, they're afraid, right, that they don't, they don't pray, or maybe they don't even know who Jesus Christ is, and so they're, they're not able to pray, pray. And so what you do is you stand in the gap for them. You stand in the gap and you bring them before the Lord, and you pray and ask the Almighty God to meet them and to deposit the hope that he's given you into their lives. You see, this is such an awesome, awesome call that God has. It's part of our purpose, and so you and I need to be doing that, all right? We need to be praying. Prayer is what's going to change the tide of this war on the virus and on our economy. It's our prayers that's going to make the difference more than anything else we can do. Now, Another thing that you can do besides this prayer, which is the most important, is to back that up by finding ways to help those that are hurting and those that are in pain, right? In other words, what I want you to do is what I taught you to do in Growth Track for those of you that have taken it, right? You find a hurt and you heal it. You find a need and you fulfill it. And so I want you to go out and I want you to care about people like that. I want you to find somebody, perhaps that's elderly or has this autoimmune uh, thing going on, and I want you to give them a call and maybe ask if you can get their groceries for them, right? Or maybe cut their grass or, or just talk to them, pray with them. And, and if you can't leave your house, maybe you could, you could order them and, uh, some gifts on Amazon, some food and some books and puzzles, right? Just to let them know that you're thinking about them. And then maybe you can find some of these folks. There's so many that have been laid off. There's tons of people all around us that have lost their jobs, and they need you to encourage them. Maybe you can send them a card. Maybe in the card with, good, with words of uplifting uh, that God is going to take care of them, you can send a $25 gift card to the local groceries, right? You can meet a need that way. 
Or maybe you can be creative like uh, some of the leadership around here. I've watched them. They're on Zoom for their small groups, and, and they're doing their iPhones and, and uh, doing Bible studies together. There's all these different ways that are coming at us how we can connect and reach out to help people. And I know that many of you that are listening, you have all these great ideas. <laughs> Again, go down to that little uh, chat feature and put your ideas in there. I'd love to hear them. They're inspirational to us. And so we want you to do that. Hey, listen, the bottom line here, though, is to remember that God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And he wants you to care like that about the people around you. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about today, right, out of this Psalm 23 that I saw was this last point here. Rely on God's protection and guidance. This I'm going to underscore. We have to rely, especially in the valley of the darkness we're walking in, on God's protection and his guidance. And we got to know that he gives it to us. David said, for your rod, O Lord, and your staff, they comfort me. And so what we see here is that God is pointing us to this fact that he is our shepherd. He is our good shepherd. You know, way back when, when they had shepherds and sheep, when this uh, analogy was used, well, what it was was that this rod, this rod was used and, and the staff was used by the shepherds. They actually were able to keep their sheep in line, right? They were able to take care of them this way. They could bring them comfort, right? Just like Dave said, it brings them comfort. See, a lot of us will look for all these other things to bring us comfort, you know, escaping a TV or eating or, or all these things. But God says, no, the only thing that's going to bring you comfort is from the shepherd, Right? That's a word for somebody. It's the shepherd that brings you to this place of being able to uh, be at peace. And so what we see in our analogy is that the rod, the rod is something we've not seen before. It's just a long, big, heavy stick. And on the top, it has like a nodule, right? A big, heavy nodule on it. And what the shepherd would do is anything that came near the sheep that would harm it, he would like throw it at, throw it at the, uh, the predator, Right? And just like a missile would hit them, and that would keep the sheep safe. Uh huh. So, Father God says that He has His rod and He is watching out. Coronavirus, economic problems, they're not going to come near you. For God has set His angels to watch over you. It's His rod, His protection, because He is the Good Shepherd. And then we learn that there's a staff involved. And the staff, way back when, was used by the shepherd to, to uh, help the sheep, right? They were used to keep the sheep in line. And they were used to draw them close to the shepherd. And, and if a little sheep, you know, fell down, the, the staff would be used to pick them up, right? And to draw them in. And so Father God says he's working behind the scenes. He's using his staff. He's calling you to come into himself, to be close to him right? He's there to pick you up with his staff when you feel lonely and isolated and alone. God says he will use his staff to pick you up and to bring you home. Do you see that? Bring you into himself. And so you and I, we have a good shepherd. We have a good shepherd who has his rod and his staff, and they will bring us comfort. You see, unlike a lot of people would say, God's just sitting up there going, <laughs> I hope those humans figure out how to find a vaccine fast right? God does not do that. He's walking with us. He's with us each and every day. He's helping us, and we need to know that. And so what I want to do here is I want to give you one more scripture. I want to help you by giving you one more scripture that helps us to understand the protection and guidance that God gives us. And it comes out of Isaiah 40, 29, and 31. It says this, he strengthens those who are weak and tired, a lot of us were like that woman that you saw with the 23rd Psalm. We're tired, we're, we're burdened, right? And so God is calling to us, and he says, even those who are young and weary and grow weak, and the young people can fall exhausted. You see, it's within our human nature. We can only go but so long, and then we get tired. But watch here, watch what God does for us. But those who trust, those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. We're going to be renewed. So what is it 30 days that now we're in quarantine? It doesn't matter. You see, God's going to renew us. And look what it says. We will grow wings like eagles, right? We'll be able to soar and we will be able to run and not grow weary. 
they will walk and not, and not grow weak. And so what we see here is this promise that God has given us that you and I indeed will be able to rise up and rise above the valley of the shadow of death that seems to have in, you know, encompassed our country and many of our lives. And so I want to uh, just close by saying that I'm getting ready to go into prayer. And uh, I want you to be able to know that, that we're here for you. And at any time, if you desire prayer, there's a prayer button there that you can uh, click on it and it goes into a private chat and those folks are there to help you and to pray for you, okay? Now, I am very keenly aware that there are some of you, I know you, you've been to our church before, right? To our fellowship. But there are many of you, you just kind of stream, you just kind of popped in. Listen, this is not by accident. God has brought you here because he's got a message and the message is he cares about you. He loves you and he's calling you home. And so this message was designed to come after your heart and to grab you. And if you want that, the Father's calling, you wanna respond, I'm getting ready to close this in prayer and I'm gonna give you the opportunity to pray with me and to do just that. Now, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, just stop right now and let's just get quiet and ask the Holy Spirit to come as we close our time in prayer. Yes, Father. Father God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit goes through the cameras, that he goes into the homes of each and every person that was viewing this today that you are keenly aware of who they are. You know every hair on their head. And so, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go now and that you would bring comfort, that you would use this 23rd Psalm to just sow in them a place where they can lie down and be at rest, that they could find those green pastures, Lord, right where they're at right now. Okay. And for those of you who are far from God and you want to come close, Father says now is your time, your appointed time. And so if that's you right where you're at, I'm going to ask you to pray these words with me. They're not magical words, but our God hears them and he can look at your heart, right? And so you're going to pray it while the whole, the whole uh, audience is praying. I want you to pray this prayer with me because they're praying for you right now. You just say, Father God, go ahead. Father God, I want to come home. I accept your son, Jesus Christ as my Savior. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. And the best I understand, I ask you to be the leader of my life. I want to come home. Now, for those of you that are praying that prayer, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I ask that you would just seal that prayer in their hearts right now, right where they're at. I thank you, Father, that you tell me in your word that you write their name in the book of life and that they are part of your family and that you will never disown them, that you will bring them in close. Yes. And so, Father, I ask that you would do only what you can do here. I thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've uh, shown us, that you've given us today. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would walk, that you would walk with us and that you would reason with us, and that you would cause our soul to be at rest with you. I thank you, Father. I hear that. And so God says that if you are my people called by my name, right, that it is our job to be humble before our God and to bring the needs of, of those around us and of our country. He said, bring them before me, for I so desire to heal your land. And so, Father, let me be an example of that, we do bring America to you. We bring the United States to you. I bring those places that are hot spots and those, those people that are in distress tonight. And I ask, Father, for your mercy to fall upon our country, that you would begin to do what only you can do, Father. You are our one and our only hope. And so, Father, tell us, your children, the children of the God Most High, what we are to do, Lord, and we will follow suit. For we love you with all that we are, and we trust you and everything. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, guys, um, I, I just want you to know, for those of you that prayed with me uh, right now, and you had given your life to Christ and asked him to be the leader of your life, there's a button that says, I raised my hand. If you click that, then that lets me know that that, that was you, and I can continue to pray for you.
And those of you guys that do want that prayer, listen, don't go another week without it. There's that button right there. Just push it and ask for prayer. And I've got all these prayer people that are waiting in the wings. They've been praying for you. And they'll be glad to listen to the angst you have in your heart and to pray for you. And listen, also, if you want to give to this ministry, let me show you how you can do that. All right? You can text to give at 45777, and you can type VCC in the amount that you'd like to donate, right? You can also uh, give in these ways through the texting, the vineyardchurch.com, or even banking online, and it automatically sends it to the church. Friends, I sure do miss you, and I pray for you often. Be safe. I love you.